Imagine yourself a young AR effects creator working on your Instagram effect. You need to create a smoke effect. And for that, you will be using the incredible particle system in MetaSpark. But when you edit, this happens. What the hell is even that? Well, this sucks. But I've got good news for you. I will teach you how to create a beautiful fade in, fade out effect using the standard particles in MetaSpark. No JavaScript and no Spark SL needed. Everything right here with our beloved patch edged. First thing first, I would like to mention that this effect will only work with particles in local position. So I haven't figured out uh, an efficient way to make it work with particles in global position yet. And another thing to note is that this tutorial is an adaptation of a gem I found on Josh Beckwith's YouTube channel from three years ago. So he's an expert in MetaSpark shaders and in that tutorial he talked about creating bulky particles with SDF circles. So thank you Josh Beckwith for everything you've done. So let's go to the tutorial. Let's add a plane tracker and the emitter. And the second step, to see the result better, set the type to plane uh, of the, this particle. And don't forget to set the particle to local space. Also increase the birth rate to decrease the speed and increase the lifespan. This will form a kind of a cube. Now create a material. The first node we will use is the vertex attribute with the property local position. But what is local position? This node, widely used in game engines, basically tells you with color information RGB where the vertex of that mesh is in the rendering. Red for the x-axis, green for the y-axis and blue for the z-axis. The other node we will use is the fragment stage. This node jumps from the vertex shader to rasterization in the CPU rendering pipeline of your phone. Okay, okay I admit this concept is still new to me and I'm trying to learn it. So let's use it as something essential in our project for now. Okay, connect it to material of our particle and as you can see, nothing happened. This is because our particles are tiny, so we need to multiply it by a large value. Now it works. This node multiply will define the scale of our transition. All right, but what does this colorful thing have to do with fade in, fade out particles? Okay, you should remember that I mentioned that each axis is represented by a color, right? What if I take that red color, only one axis? Oh my god, beautiful! Please drain me! Please take everything I have! Yeah, that's it. So, to see what's happening better, I recommend always using a shader in the past because I am very visual. So, we will also use a color and take only the RGB value from that color. Using the Y axis of the position as alpha. Uh, we switch to the y-axis because the particles are coming from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top, whatever. Uh, okay, so we already have our beautiful fading particles, but we don't have a fade out, like uh, the particles issue disappear abruptly. So we need to manipulate this gradient we just create. A gradient that has a pause in the middle, we need that. So now we are getting into that boring part where you and probably me should have paid attention in high school. Mathematics. Okay, and I found two ways to do this using math. The first one is with the power function, the same as Josh used in his tutorial, which is the exponentiation of a value. You can get a preview of what's happening on the Book of Shaders website. If I take the power of two of a value that goes from zero to one, this happens. The second way is using absolute, which is a bit different but also works. So now all we have to do is manipulate this value so that it stays in the middle of our imaginary particle cube. For that we will use a subtract node behind the scale node. So now all we have to do is invert this value by getting the subtract node by and subtracting one minus value. Okay? So there you go. Now we have a nice fade in fade out effect. <laughs> boy. All right, but where is the smoke? This was a tutorial about the smoke. Okay, okay. I will assume you haven't fully understood this concept yet. I will hold your little hand 
and teach you the rest of the tutorial, okay? So take the texture of the smoke or the PNG texture you want and replace it with the color, okay? Instead of subtracting one from the value, subtract the alpha of the smoke from this value. Now, all you have to do is play around these values. I like to create sliders to make it more, to make my work easier, you know, and that's it. Yeah, this is just an example of how you can use these position values. Uh, this is not a defined thing to use. You can use for a lot of stuff. So you can also use for other purposes like scaling the texture or modify the geometry. This scaling patch is available in my Gone Road shop and you can get it for just five bucks. So consider it is a sturdy tool and a way to support my work. If I achieve good results, I will continue bringing cool tutorials here, okay? So thank you and a big shout out for everyone.